thought, what mushrooms could I talk about that they may not cover that would be of interest? So that's what I decided to do. I'm going to pick, I picked about four mushrooms that I could talk about a little bit in depth because if you try to get into, it's difficult to talk sensibly about any hundreds of mushrooms and make any sense of it. So I thought I'd talk about ones that are very local, that you can pick for yourself, that have some very well-proven medicinal benefits, and maybe we'll go from there. By the way, you don't often see blue mushrooms, turquoise mushrooms, and, and so that's uh, uh, very interesting. Chlorocyborea, very interesting mushroom. The first one, I want, first one I'd like to talk about is the false tinder conch, uh, Fomis fomentarius. Um, this is the one, I don't know if any of you have heard of Utsi the Iceman, probably many of you have. And uh, he was carrying two mushrooms. He was carrying the birch polypore, the Piptoporus betulinus, and also this one. But he was carrying, the, the, what he was carrying of this mushroom was the context that's just under the initial surface of this mushroom. And then he had taken it and soaked it in dung water, you know, for the nitrates and su as such. And then it could be used in that manner for a fire starter. So it wasn't really used for him by him as a medicinal mushroom, even though it is. In fact, this particular mushroom, which is widely, widely grown on birch trees in this part of the world, um, interesting, another birch fungi, eh? uh, that this particular one has some powerful antibacterial compounds in it that are, are worth of note. And uh, early on, uh, it has been surmised that probably early First Nations and other peoples early on with this mushroom were actually adding it to their cooking pots. And they didn't add it for the flavor, and they didn't add it because they could eat them. They added them because they contained compounds that, when boiled, liberated into the super stew and helped prevent spoilage that may lead to... Uh, a number of nasty gastrointestinal upsets. When you think about a food on a fire, it gets cold, it gets heated again, it gets cold. And so there, the antibacterial activities in this and also would draw out probably some of the sugars that would help people to maintain healthy immune function while they're coping with the kind of climate we have in Alberta without central heating or electricity. You know, it's gotta be tough to survive a winter of uh, around a campfire, believe me. So this is a Fomis fomentarius, a, a very, very uh, good mushroom. This is what it looks like. This is the context. This is the, when it's cut into cross section, the top one. And then what is carved out is right, is right on the um, uh, top part, just under the surface. And in Romania and in Hungary, and different countries, traditionally, they would take this context and they would make vests. And uh, today you can buy it if you go into a, a fly, fisher, uh, fly fisherman type of shop, they'll sell you a very small piece of this for your, for your flies to dry them on there. And uh, uh, when I first published my first book, I sent one off to Dr. Solomon Wasser, who's the world expert on medicinal mushrooms out in Israel. And uh, he was kind enough to send me back this hat. <laughs> and, and this is a mushroom hat. And now, this is a, and, and basically it's carved from the mushroom and stretched as they carve it, and then it forms a very felt-like material, and I didn't want to bring it down because I had all my, so much stuff to bring down already, but there it is, there's the picture. And uh, hard to get them, but you can find them here and there if you talk to people who know. Um, and so that particular uh, felt, uh, by the way, I was at the Montana Herb Gathering a couple of weeks ago, and this hat won the edible hat contest. 